did you know? In 2013, there was an internal pitch at Retro Studios proposing that after Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze, their next project should be a Star Fox game. Unfortunately though, it got shot down by Retro's leadership, so the game never got made. The project has never been talked about publicly until now, and it would have been called Star Fox Armada. So in today's video, we're taking a look at what the game would have been if it got the green light. Did you know gaming staff recently talked to Eric Kozlowski, a former Retro Studios artist who spent 20 years in the industry, working on games like Uncharted, Mass Effect, and of course, Donkey Kong. Eric's the guy that came up with the Star Fox concept, and he gave us the full 12-page pitch document and told us all about the game he wanted to make. The game was aimed at Wii U, and the art style would have emulated the puppet aesthetic that was seen in the series' early promotional images. The Wii U couldn't compete with the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One in terms of lifelike graphics, but it could produce a believable puppet look that would have had a unique charm that you wouldn't find anywhere else. You know, it's like, it makes sense, like retro, like we, you know, at the time rebooted Prime and then we rebooted uh, Dot Com Country. And I was like, yeah, we could reboot another Nintendo franchise. Like, I thought it would be really cool after Tropical Freeze to, to roll off onto another franchise and kind of like continue that retro legacy of rebooting Nintendo franchises that hadn't gotten a lot of love. Star Fox has taken a lot of forms over the years. The more traditional games were on-rail space shooters, while some later entries veered off into other genres, like how Star Fox Adventures was more action-adventure and Star Fox Command had real-time strategy. But the series was at its height both critically and commercially with Star Fox 64, so Armada was going to continue where that game ended, both in terms of story and gameplay. And, very importantly, Fox never gets out of his ship like he did in later games. Quoting the pitch doc directly, it says, Picking up where Star Fox 64 leaves off, Star Fox Armada is essentially a reboot as if no games have been made since. After the defeat of Andros, General Pepper realizes that Corneria and the Lilat system at large need to be rebuilt. However, the War of Andros has left the Cornerian government with the lack of resources needed to rebuild the military and civilian sectors. Rather than send its meager military out and leave the Lilat system vulnerable, Pepper hires Star Fox once again. Their mission? Search nearby systems for allies and resources. Along the way though, Fox and his crew will discover a threat far greater than Andros ever was. Going into more detail on the gameplay, the doc says, quote, Star Fox Armada will combine the classic gameplay of Star Fox 64 with new open world and multiplayer mechanics. In single player mode, players accept missions aboard the Great Fox and travel to planets, sectors, installations, and asteroid belts to complete them. As you finish missions, you will receive money that can either be sent back to Corneria or used to upgrade your ships, or even buy new ones like the Landmaster Tank and Blue Marine Submarine. After each mission, the player will have to decide on how many resources to send back to aid in Corneria's reconstruction, and how much to keep for themselves to spend on upgrading the Great Fox, the R-Wings, buying vehicles, and recruiting new characters. As great as Star Fox 64 was back in the 90s, a full playthrough only lasted an hour, which probably wouldn't fly with gamers in the Wii U era. So in addition to the main campaign, Armada is going to have optional side quest missions. Eric told us that these missions would have leaned more into the mercenary angle. Star Fox have always been mercenaries, but previous games didn't really focus on that detail. Overall, Armada would have had less of a linear structure like the old games, and expanded into more of a mission-based structure. We said earlier that Fox never gets out of his ship, the only exception is inside the Great Fox, where he can walk around in the various decks in what amounts to an interactive menu. Eric compared it to how the Normandy works in Mass Effect, where you can select missions, interact with the crew, and purchase upgrades. As for the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, it did all take place on a TV, while the Wii U gamepad emulated the ship's control panel, like showing you information about the current mission and which parts of your ship have been damaged by enemy attacks. If a wing or something's taken too many hits, the player needs to tap icons on the gamepad screen to repair it in real time. In other words, you wouldn't have to constantly look down to aim like you do in Star Fox Zero. If you want to play co-op, player one would use a Wii remote and nunchuck, and player two would use the gamepad, serving as the ship's gunner with a 360 degree review. They'd also handle repairs on the control ship's shields. For example, if a bunch of enemies fly from the left, player two would move the shields to that side and start gunning in that direction. If that style of gameplay wasn't to your liking, you could also play online with one friend or a group to complete missions with multiple ships. There also would have been a battle mode where you could have dogfights with your friends. Pretty much the same thing as versus mode in Star Fox 64, but instead of a split screen, it'd be a lot of ships flying around online. The reason the game is called quote unquote Armada is because it encourages you to build up your own squadron. 
You and a bunch of your friends can make your own team and call it Starhawk, Star Snakes, Star Dogs, whatever you want. It's your team after all. You'd also have the option of designing your own anthropomorphic characters if you didn't want to play as Fox and crew. There was another, more innovative aspect planned for the online multiplayer. In Star Fox 64, sometimes when you're in the middle of a mission, Star Wolf would show up and attack you. Jeez. Can anyone take care of it? Can't let you do that. That would also happen in Star Fox Armada, except it was going to be the other online players dropping down on you. Fans who just wanted to focus on the core single player experience could just turn this off in the options, but for everyone else, enemy mercenaries showing up and obliterating you is something that would happen from time to time. Talking more about it, Eric said, You and your friends have your own team of like Star Lion, you know, and you, you're a lion character and, you know, you could go on multiplayer missions and, and stuff like that. And I was thinking about the the Miiverse of like, you know, you could say, oh man, Star Llama came in and took me out. I'm putting up a bounty. If anyone sees Star Llama, you know, like I'll pay them 500 credits in game, you know, uh, to take them out. And I thought that would be like a fun like Miiverse integration because like Miiverse at the time was, was really cool and there was a lot of opportunity there. Star Fox games haven't sold too well since the N64 days, so a big part of this pitch was selling management on Armada's financial prospects. All the online features were one of the main selling points to keep fans playing after they've already finished the main campaign. The pitch doc calls this an evergreen title, and also mentions DLC, which was intended to bring fans back for more by adding new ships, missions, and planets over time. Nintendo didn't really have any evergreen titles in 2013, but Splatoon sort of filled that niche when it released a couple years later, and it's been incredibly successful ever since. The doc says, quote, Star Fox has a great legacy, but it can be so much more. This can be Nintendo's very own Star Wars. It's Team Fortress 2, in regards to the online community. With the proper updates to the gameplay, Star Fox is poised to stand shoulder to shoulder with Mario and Link. In an alternate timeline, maybe Nintendo's premier online game could have been Star Fox instead of Splatoon. Or of course, you know, no, there's no reason both series couldn't have lived side by side. So why didn't Star Fox Armada get made? Eric pitched a document to Retro Leadership in January 2013. They basically said, oh, cool, and then passed on it. And it doesn't appear it's ever made its way up the chain to Nintendo. Eric told us Retro's leadership and Nintendo producer Kensuke Tanabe would ultimately decide on what the best direction is to go for the studio. I'm sure they were talking with Nintendo of Japan about what makes sense for the studio to work on based on personnel, Nintendo's portfolio of games in development at the time, and what the studio staff wants to work on at the time factors into it a bit. But ultimately, a lot of those decisions came from Japan. Eric ended up resigning from Retro a year and a half later, partly because of the studio's top-down nature. Other studios he's worked on had cultures that were more open, where pitches stand a chance of being turned into actual games. When we talked to Eric, he emphasized that this was a skeleton of a document, which would have needed fleshing out from all the brilliant people at Retro. Unfortunately though, internal pitches just never got approved at the studio. We heard similar sentiments from other former Retro employees. Check out the recent video on Metroid Tactics, for example. Fortunately for Eric, though, he's since moved on to greener pastures, where things aren't so higher acryl, worked on properties like Resident Evil. As of this video's publication, Retro Studios hasn't released a single game since Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze back in 2014. So after rejecting the Star Fox Armada pitch, what did they work on instead? Eric wouldn't say. After Tropical Freeze, Eric spent a year and a half working on a game that was never released, and that's all he was willing to divulge. Whatever Retro was making, it's still considered top secret. As for what happened to Star Fox, Nintendo later teamed up with Platinum Games to make Star Fox Zero, which unfortunately ended up as the worst selling game in the entire franchise. This was eight years ago, and there hasn't been another Star Fox game since. Fans are still waiting for the day that Fox will make his triumphant return, whether it's a reboot from Retro, or maybe in-house at Nintendo, hopefully that day isn't too far off. Did you also know that Retro Leadership pitched an idea for a Zelda Tactics game to Nintendo, but they passed on the idea? For more on that, check out the video on the screen. We know some folks are going to ask about the Star Fox Grand Prix rumors, so rest assured, Did You Know Gaming already has the scoop, and a video is being made. I'm your narrator, she says, and folks that love Digino Gaming will probably really appreciate this video that I just put out. It's looking at all the regional differences between the US and the Japanese version of Super Mario World. From me and all of Digino Gaming, thanks for watching.